This conference will now be recorded. Hi, everybody. I'm Melanie Reinhardt, Director of Financial Assistance at Seminole State College. And I'd like to say thank you to Nassenti for giving me a few minutes today to give you some tips and tricks of financial aid while you transfer for your college. Obviously, you've been in college now for a couple of years for a two-year course, and so some of this might be review of something you already know, but hopefully we'll have tips and tricks for you to help you on your way. I want to begin by saying we are so proud of you. We're so proud for you to be a Seminole State graduate and to be moving on to your four-year degree. I will share my screen and we'll get started. Now, after my presentation, we'll have a short Q&A session with your two financial aid specialists, Caitlin Brown and Edie Cathy, uh, and we'll be giving you some more information there. But let's get started with 10 financial aid facts in 15 minutes, and I'll do my best to hold that to that 15 minutes. So fact number one, let's talk a little bit about what is financial aid. So financial aid is going to be all money that you get to help you pay for college. Uh, there's four main categories, federal, state, institutional and outside resources. We'll go over in more detail the funds in each of those categories, uh, but just know that most of your federal money will be the same no matter what college you choose to attend. So we all know that financial aid typically starts with the FAFSA and that stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Now you should know by now, at least I hope so, that you complete your FAFSA as close to October 1st every year as you possibly can. And the reason for that is because there are some funds that are what they call first come first serve, meaning those that complete their FAFSA sooner are eligible for more funds. So that's coming up here in the next couple of days. So be sure that you log on to www.studentaid.gov and get that FAFSA completed. Now remember that FAFSA is a snapshot of that particular moment in time that day that you're completing the FAFSA. However, your income information should be from two years ago. So the FAFSA that is about to open on October 1 is the 2021-2022 school year FAFSA. And on that FAFSA, you are actually going to use your 2019 household income information. Now, do you know that if that income is significantly different in 2020 than it is than it was in 2019, you can contact your financial aid office and ask them for help in altering that information. However, when you fill out that FAFSA, you have to list that income exactly as it was in 2019. You also want to be sure that you're inputting correct information on your FAFSA. Again, this is something you probably already know, uh, but your name, your social, and your date of birth are the three most important pieces of information that you put into that FAFSA. So please be sure that you get that correct each and every year. Also on your FAFSA, you're going to list all of the schools that you are interested in. You are welcome to continue to list the mental state as a school on your FAFSA. And that way, if you contact our office for any help at all, we would be able to see your information. Of course, you don't have to, but we just want to let you know that we're here to help. So also be sure that you list any four-year college that you might be interested in. A lot of colleges will use your FAFSA information to let you know what kind of age you'd be eligible for, and so they won't know your information unless you list them. You can list up to 10 colleges on a FAFSA. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about what is an EFC, and this is going to be super important for you as you're moving forward. The EFC is going to be the number that the federal government calculates based on the information you input on your FAFSA. EFC stands for Expected Family Contribution. So if your EFC is, let's say, 1,025, then what that means is the federal government is saying from the information that they have from your FAFSA, that they expect your family or you to be able to contribute $1,025 to your college tuition. Now, I completely understand that sometimes those EFCs are much, much higher than what can realistically be paid. However, the formula has been set by the federal government and there's nothing financial aid offices can do to alter the formula. The higher that EFC number, 
the less aid that you're eligible for. Now, while I said that there's nothing that schools can do to alter the formula, there are things that a financial aid office can do to help you reduce that EFC. Like I mentioned before, if your income is significantly different than it was in 2019, you can talk to your financial aid office and they can give you steps to take to help take some of that income off of there for you. Again, it takes reaching out to that financial aid office though and asking for that help. You cannot do it yourself. There are many factors that are included in that EFC formula. So again, you wanna make sure that your information is accurate as possible. And so some of those um, data points are gonna be like the number of people in your household, your student income, your parent income, taxes paid, et cetera. Now keep in mind that when you're completing the FAFSA, all of your demographic information is gonna be as it is the day you're completing the FAFSA. All of your income information is gonna be from 2019. Let's get into a little bit more detail of what types of aid are available. Again, this may be review, but I'll go over what the differences will be from uh, your, at your new four-year school from what you experienced at Seminole State. So your first federal fund is gonna be your Pell Grant. And the Pell Grant is of course our favorite um, and being a grant is one that you do not have to pay back. Your Pell Grant amount is directly affected by that EFC number that we just talked about as well as your enrollment status. So meaning whether you're enrolled full-time, half-time, less than half-time, okay, each semester, that will determine how much Pell Grant money you get. Now with the Pell Grant, it's gonna be one of those funds that's gonna be the exact same amount no matter what school you attend, okay? It's only affected by the EFC and your enrollment status. The next we're gonna take a look at is called SEOG, which stands for Supplemental Educational Opportunity Grant. Now this one might be a little different from school to school, so be sure that you ask your financial aid office not only how is it awarded, but how much that they award. Here at Seminole State, we award it to the fastest that we received the first. Um, so again, this is one of those first come first serve funds, and we award $1,000 for the year. Work Study is the third federal grant we'll talk about, and Work Study is a great program. Uh, it is considered a grant because you do not have to pay it back. However, you do have to work for those funds. It is a job. You are paid an hourly wage, and you can choose whether to uh, apply those funds to your student account or have those funds given directly to you as a paycheck. Work study jobs are great because they are typically on campus jobs and not only are they flexible and work with your schedule, but it's a great way to get to know people on campus as well. There are some campuses that have off campus work study jobs. So again, just contact the financial aid office to determine what's available. Next, we're gonna talk about federal student loans. There are three categories of federal student loans. Uh, there's subsidized loans, there's unsubsidized loans, and there's parent plus loans. So the major difference between loans here at Seminole State and at your four-year college is gonna be the amount of the unsubsidized loan. As you see on my screen, when you were a freshman, you were eligible for $3,500 in subsidized loans. When you're a sophomore, you're eligible for $4,500. In your junior and senior year, you're eligible for $5,500. Now, subsidized student loans are the loans that the government pays the interest for you while you're in school at least half time. Once you graduate or leave college or fall below that half time status, you are given what they call a six month grace period before you're required to start making payment. There's also an origination fee of 1.062%. So just know, for example, and this will be the same at every school, uh, if let's say you borrow $500, you'll actually just receive $492 because the government keeps that origination fee before it's sent to the school. This year, student loan interest rate is 2.75% and that it will remain the same for the life of that loan unless you should happen to consolidate those loans. And that interest rate is subject to change each and every year. So each year that you borrow student loans, you should contact your financial aid office or log on to studentaid.gov to determine what that year's interest rate will be. Unsubsidized student loans 
Um, it also has the 2.75 interest rate. Uh, it also begins repayment within six months of either leaving college or falling below that halftime status and also has that origination fee we talked about. Now, this amount uh, will pretty much be the same between Seminole State and your four-year college um, unless your dependency status changes. And what that means is the FAFSA and the federal government has said that you have to use your parents' income information on your FAFSA until you're at least 24 years of age or you meet one of their criteria. Now, once you pass that age of 24, then you're considered independent and you can list only your information. So dependent students are eligible for $2,000 in unsubsidized student loans and independent students are eligible for 6,000. Now, a loan that you may not be aware of because we don't use them very often at Seminole State is the Parent PLUS loan. And so what this loan is, is your parents, if you don't have quite enough in your Pell Grant money or your student loans, your parents can help out by applying for a Parent PLUS loan. Now keep in mind, this loan is um, at, by, done by application and it does check your parents' credit. Student loans does not check your credit and automatically award it off your FAFSA. Your parent can log on to that same studentaid.gov website and fill out an application and they'll be told immediately whether they are approved or not. The interest rate for a Parent PLUS loan is 5.3%. And does begin, sorry, does begin repayment within 30 days of the first disbursement. So while student loans give you a while to get set up to start paying it back, they do expect parents to start paying back their loan within 30 days of receiving the money. The origination fee for Parent Plus loans is also significantly more at 4.236%. And again, don't forget those interest fees. I'm sorry, those interest rates and those origination fees are subject to change each and every year. Next, I'll take a look at the Oklahoma State Grants. Uh, these grants are gonna be um, available at all of your state schools, whether they're four-year or two-year. Uh, the first one we're gonna take a look at is OTAG. It's up to $1,000, and that's gonna be the same amount, again, no matter what school that you go to. It is a first-come, first-serve um, fund, and so you wanna get that fast foot done really quickly. Uh, the way that works is the Oklahoma State Regents will send out a deadline each year. And so if your FAFSA was done before that deadline, then you get the funds. If the FAFSA was done after that deadline, you don't. Uh, there are a couple other criteria. Your EFC has to be 1700 or lower, um, but really getting that, that deadline, meeting that deadline with your FAFSA is the most important. You also must be in a degree seeking program and enrolled in at least half time. The next one we're gonna talk about is Oklahoma's Promise. So you should know by now whether you've qualified for Oklahoma's Promise or not, um, but one thing to note, the big difference between Seminole State and other schools is that here at Seminole State, we do look up each and every student to make sure you are uh, Oklahoma Promise eligible. However, the Oklahoma's Promise program does stipulate that it is the student's responsibility to let the school know if they are an Oklahoma's Promise student. So be sure you reach out to your financial aid office at your new school and let them know if you are an Oklahoma's Promise student so that they don't miss awarding your funds. Now, Oklahoma's Promise is awarded in the amount of uh, your tuition. So here at Seminole State, it's $104 per credit hour for tuition. Uh, and so Oklahoma's Promise pays that amount based on the number of credit hours you are enrolled in. Next, we'll touch briefly on institutional scholarships. So the biggest tip that I can give you for institutional scholarships is to contact your school and contact them now. Um, so schools do in institutional scholarships totally different. Um, while we can give you pretty standard answers for federal and for state aid, institutional aid is completely up to the school. So as you probably already know here at Seminole State, we have one application that's due March 1st of every year, and that uh, qualifies you for all the scholarships that we offer. A lot of your schools, especially your larger four-year schools, will have an application for each college or each department, uh, for a foundation and for institutional. Some are online, some are on paper, uh, some have different deadlines. 
So it can be all over the board. So just reach out to your financial aid office and ask them those questions. Ask them you know, what kind of scholarships they offer, when they offer them, how they offer them, and how you go about applying for them. Of course, if you're in athletics, you already know the drills. You talk to the coaches um, and try out for those scholarships. You can also reach out to your athletic departments to see if there's anything available. Also be aware and you want to ask your financial aid office if they will allow your athletic scholarship to staff with institutional scholarships. Unfortunately, here at Seminole State, we do not allow institutional scholarships to stack. And so that can really affect you if you um, or happen to be the recipient of both institutional and athletic scholarships. So number eight is going to be you need to find out how much your school is going to cost. So hopefully you've already done this research and you've selected the best school for you, not only based on their programs, but based on their cost. So again, for example, here at Seminole State, and most of the time you can find this information on the school's website. Um, but just to give you an example, using Seminole State, uh, our published tuition and fees is $158 per credit hour. So you can estimate that a fall schedule of 15 credit hours would cost around $4,095. And I went ahead and threw books in there and that's just estimated. So it might be a little more, might be a little less. Um, also, you want to ask questions about your school's tuition and fees. Ask them if there are any class specific fees when you're enrolling. Some schools, there are online fees for online classes or there are um, department fees or there are lab fees. And so typically those are not included in the published tuition and fees amount. So be sure that you ask either your financial aid office or your bursar's office exactly how they structure that so that you can get an accurate uh, estimate on your charges. So once you know your charges and once you know your financial aid, then you can put the two together and you can get a good picture of what you're up against for that semester. So again, know your aid before you get to your school. Make these plans ahead of time, especially if you're going to need to sign up for a payment plan, say, or, um, or if you're going to need to make payments over the semester. Know what that's going to look like, because a lot of times your payment plans, uh, the down payments will get bigger as the semester goes along, because obviously you have fewer months to make that payment. So again, plan ahead. Know what your charges are. Know what your aid's going to be so that you can make those plans. So I have a scenario here again um, at Seminole State. Uh, if you're zero, what we call zero ESC, so that means you're eligible for all types of aid that are available. Uh, you could receive over $5,400 in federal and state aid for that semester. So if we go back one screen, we can see that it costs $4,095, but we're going to get over $5,400. What happens to the other $1,400? Again, you probably already know this, um, but those funds are refunded to you to use for costs such as books, uh, living expenses, etc. Just know that any refund you get from any aid, whether it's federal or state, must be used for educational or living purposes only. So last but not least, just know again that Seminole State's financial aid office is here to help you. No matter where you're moving on to, no matter where you're going to go, we are more than happy to answer any questions you have, help you navigate any of the FAFSA questions or anything from your school. Just reach out to us, let us know how we can help, and we'll be happy to do so. Again, thank you guys so much for joining me today. It's been a great pleasure, and I'm going to throw it over to Caitlin for some Q&A. Hi everyone, it's Caitlin from the Financial Aid Office at Seminole State College. I'm here with the Director of Financial Aid, Melanie Reinhardt and our other financial aid specialist, Edie Cathy. We're here to answer some questions about transferring and how that affects your financial aid. The first one that we get a lot of is, how do I send my FAFSA to another school? That's a great question, Caitlin. So you want to begin by contacting the financial aid office at your new school to determine which FAFSA is appropriate for the semester that you're starting at their school. Then you want to log on to www.studentaid.gov Go to the school selection tab and select your new school. Then be sure not to forget to make it to the end of the FAFSA and click submit. Awesome, thanks Mel. Um, so the next question that we get a lot is, do I need to give my school anything from Seminole State or my new school anything from Seminole State? 
So yes, your new school is definitely going to want to see all those fabulous grades that you made here at Seminole State College. So you'll need to make sure you don't have a balance with our business office. And once you've done that, you can go to the admissions office and they'll get you that final official uh, college transcript to take with you. Also, if you're switching mid-year and you were selected for verification, and you'll know what verification is if you were selected, it's that extra paperwork you had to do. But we can help you out with that process and share some of that information with you so that you can take that with you to your new school and hopefully save you some time there. Awesome, thanks Edie. Um, our next question that we got is, how can I see what financial aid I already received and how much I have left? So this is super important, Caitlin. Students need to know uh, how much they've borrowed or how much they've used in their Pell Grant so that they can properly plan out the rest of their college career. So there's a couple of different ways. You can find out what you were, uh, sorry, what you received at Seminole State College by either looking at your award letter on your financial aid student portal or on your bills in My SSC, My SSC OK. Now, if you're needing to know your lifetime history of your financial aid, Again, you can log on to studentaid.gov with your FSA ID and your dashboard will have your loan and grant information available. You can also click view details for a further breakdown of either. Cool, thanks Mel. Um, the next question we have is, does the Seminole State College Financial Aid Office need anything from me before I transfer? So we would like for you to notify us that you're leaving it. And depending on what time of the year you're leaving us, that we may need to cancel some of this, the disbursements that we were planning for you to get here. We have to cancel those so that your new school will be able to draw that money down there for you. And also, if you had loans here with us, you'll need to do the exit counseling. And you'll do that on the studentaid.gov and you will complete that exit counseling for us to finish out your file here so that you're ready to get loans at your new school. Thanks, Edie. Um, so the last question is just a general question. Is there anything else I should know before transferring? So you want to get all those scholarships that you were able to get here. If, for instance, if you had institutional scholarships here at Seminole State, you may want to apply for the new school's institutional scholarship. So you need to check with their financial aid office and find out if there's any that you qualify for and what the deadline is so that you can get that application into them as soon as possible. And also, if you receive any scholarships from outside sources from your local school or your local community, you'll need to be sure to keep in contact with those folks and make sure they know that you're going to a new school so that they'll send those funds to your new school. Yeah, so I have two last tips. Um, the first one is to talk just look really quick about consortium agreements. So when you get ready to leave Seminole State, like maybe you need one or two more classes to finish out your degree, or once you get to your four-year school, uh, you identify a couple of classes that Seminole State offers that you'd rather take with us. Uh, well, you can do that through what they call a consortium agreement. And what that is, is an agreement between the two schools that they'll recognize all of the hours that you're enrolled in at both schools, and that will be uh, the enrollment status that they'll pay your aid for. Now, you want to be sure to contact the financial aid office from the school that you're seeking your degree from, because they'll be the ones that are going to be responsible for that form, as well as for dispersing your aid. If you need any help with that, though, just give us a holler and we'd be happy to help. Uh, the last one is keep in contact with your new school's financial aid office and check your student email. So many schools, including Seminole State, use your student email as a primary means of communication with you and to send you important information, not only about your financial aid, uh, but all things on campus. So be sure you're checking that email. Awesome. Thanks, you guys. So, um, of course, if you have any more questions for us, you can always reach us um, during our regular business hours at 405-382-9247. Um, if you need to send us an email, we can be reached at um, finaid, that's F-I-N-A-I-D, at sscok.edu. And then, of course, we each have our own extensions if you need to talk to one of us individually. Um, do you guys have anything else you want to share before we sign off of here? I just wish you all the best of luck and, and hope that things go well. Come back and see us. <laughs> Bye.